Today you're gonna learn everything you need to know about AI agents in NADEN. Welcome to part two of our NADEN Mastery Series. NADEN's AI agents are a feature so powerful it can read through any transcript, extract all the valuable information, and take actions for you automatically without a single line of code. Very simple. This is what we built in our last video. These are the critical notes that you need to know in order to start out with NADEN. So if you're not familiar with these, I'll link the last video above in case you're curious. And in that video, I alluded to the AI agent superpowers. Like any agent, it has a system prompt and it receives a user message. And then it decides when to take certain actions, like putting the end of call report in a Google Sheet. So in this video, I'm going to demystify how to get the most out of N8N AI agents for voice AI applications. I'm Alejo from Amplify Voice and everything I'm sharing with you today comes from actual real implementations that we've deployed for clients. If you want me to work on your project, click on the first link below. And if you want to learn how to build great voice agents, come join our school community where you can get direct help from me and my team. Now let's get into N8N AI agents. What we looked at last time is that you can insert AI agents into a workflow. And in this case, it was simply creating a summary of the transcript of the conversation. But this is not very useful if you can't do anything with that summary. But summaries are not the only thing that AI agents can do. So let's walk through the five components of AI agents more in detail and show you how you can make them actually useful. So we're gonna add a new node, AI agent, and you'll immediately see this box. So the first element is the prompt, but you'll see that I can't actually click in here or change anything because first I need to change the type of prompt, the source for the prompt. And this is where we'll be passing in the transcript. But the system prompt is a little hidden. You have to click on add option, system message, and now we can insert instructions here. So component number one is the prompt. Component number two, the chat model. So we're gonna click out and go into chat, chat model plus, I really like Claude. If you wanna know why, I'll leave the Claude 4 video linked above. And that's pretty much it for the chat model we inserted there. So component number two is which model is actually processing this data that you're passing to the AI agent. Component number three, memory. We're gonna go with simple memory, which is storage inside of N8N. And all the same in session ID, we're actually gonna choose on define below. And the key we're gonna define later once we're actually passing in data. This could be your user's phone number, such that this agent will have memory of previous conversations up to five conversations in this case. So key, we're gonna say, let's say we put in my phone number, but we wanna make this a dynamic variable later on. So it matches a specific caller's phone number to their conversation history. That's component number three, memory. Number four, and what we're gonna spend a lot of time today is tools. And you can do a bunch of different things here, but I wanna make it useful for you voice AI builders. But just so you're aware, you can call different N8M workflows from an AI agent, which opens up a world of possibilities. The code tools and the API tools we're gonna leave for a different day because they take more setup and you can do the same things with other tools. You can connect some MCP clients, vector stores, but what you really wanna pay attention to is the other tools. This is where it gets good. Do not get overwhelmed by the amount of tools. And that's why you have a search bar. And what I care about right now is putting my end of call report into a Google Sheet, which I'm gonna create in a different tab and the agent's gonna know how to automatically fill it in. That's tools. And finally, I'm gonna add what's called structured data output. But what does that mean? Sometimes you want the AI agent to output something right here that takes a certain shape. For example, extract the name of the user during the call or extract the name, email, and phone number in one block, nice and neat. So number five, structured data output, you will find by clicking this button, require specific output format. And then we activate what is called an output parser. It's simply a bunch of unstructured data comes out, but these are the fields that I want you to extract. The example N8N provides is extracting the state and the cities, say, from a conversation. But what we want is something different. I want the name of the user, the first name, and I'll give it an example. This can be any example as long as it's a first name. Then I'm gonna want the last name. And I don't really want cities. I want the phone number. And that's it. From the conversation, these are the things I want to extract. And those are all the possible components that you can use for an AI agent, but you don't always need all five. You can just have a prompt with a chat model. Those are the only two that are required. Now let's go one level deeper. 
My commitment to you is not to teach you things, it's to give you skills. So you've probably already noticed that there are two warning signs, red warning signs that don't seem very nice. And one of the critical skills is debugging. So let's click in and try to understand what's going on. We're gonna hover over the red sign and it says issues, the parameter prompt is required. Oh wait, this is empty. So we're gonna fill it in with a user message. In this case, we wanna pass the transcript of a call. That would usually show up here, but it says wire me up. Oh wait, I have not connected this node yet. So what I'm gonna do is go to where I have this webhook and I'm gonna re-plug this into the right node. What is in this webhook is a conversation that I had with a random agent. And like I showed you last time, you insert, insert the webhook in the webhook settings portion of your retail agent. The use case is not important. So I just asked it to role play uh, being a real estate agent and setting an appointment. So that's what we did. That's this conversation. And that conversation exists within that webhook that I pinned and in this transcript right here. So that transcript, now that it's connected, I'm going to be able to pull from that. I want to ignore headers and go straight into transcript. I can drag and drop. And then it shows me what that transcript says. That's one part of the prompt, which is the message. But we also want the system prompt. And we're going to say, you are a transcript analysis agent in charge of extracting key information from a transcript of a conversation and updating a Google Sheet with that information. Very simple system prompt. It can get a lot more sophisticated. And if you want to learn more about that, go check out that Cloud4 video. So I'm going to click out of there. We fixed that. We're not seeing any errors, but I still see an error here. I wonder what's going on. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't actually inputted a document. Sometimes you'll have to add credentials, like just connecting your Google account. And this is actually how most tools are set up. They'll have a credential, a tool description, and then what you want to do with that tool. What is it that you want to do with this Google sheet? You can get rows, update rows, create a new sheet, add a new row to the end of the sheet. And that's actually the one that we want, but we don't have a sheet yet. So I'm going to go create it and I'll be right back. I'm back. I quickly created a Google sheet with just first name, last name and phone number, which is the data we're extracting. And you might say, wait, that's not very useful. I can't do anything with that. And you'd be correct. What if we add, say, the full transcript and then a summary of the transcript for the use case that we are doing? We're setting up appointments for a potential home buyer to get a showing of a certain property. So we would want to know, is the appointment set? Now we're going to share this, copy link, and we can fill this in where it says document. Instead of from list, we're going to go with by URL, and I'm just going to paste the URL there. And the sheet is simply going to be sheet one. And when I do that, you'll see that these get added automatically, which is pretty cool. Not only that, but you get two options for the agent to fill this in automatically. If you hover over these stars, then you'll see, let the model define this parameter. And if you click it, this will be filled in automatically by the model. That's option one. Option two is map automatically. But there is a requirement for this, which is the fields that get added have to be the exact same name as the ones here. So when we run this, let's run the AI agent, the data is already pinned. This runs. The thing is, this is actually not going to work with this map automatically, because this requires for the data that is already coming in to be called the exact same names as the one in the Google Sheet. That's why I recommend for you to use the map each column manually, but you actually don't have to map it manually. You can let the AI define this and fill it in automatically. Now, when I run this, what I'm getting out is the first name, the last name, phone number, transcript, summary, and whether the appointment was set. The reason this is giving me an error is because of the parsing in Google Sheets, you can't just have a plus and a bunch of other symbols. It thinks it's math. So we have two ways to do it. We can remove the plus and then show the N8N agent. Hey, by the way, for this column, phone number, make sure to not include a plus or to include an apostrophe before the plus. And those are two ways that you can make it work with Google Sheets. Now that I have this, bam, I call this. And now when I look here, it has an apostrophe and you can read it perfectly. I prefer this first way to do it so you don't have any weird symbols to take care of later. 
So I can clarify that to the AI by going to the tool and adding a description. And I just wanna go with the phone number without the plus. It's simpler, but also you might notice that appointment set is yes. Maybe you were expecting for that appointment set to have the details of the appointment if there was one. So you can describe that appointment details. The more descriptive, the more reliable your agent is going to be. So I hope that you see how the collaboration between the AI agent and your descriptions, extra descriptions, is where the real power is because the agent is not in your head. It cannot know by default exactly what you want. So when it's appropriate, describe it. And you see how I just changed something and instead of green, I get a yellow. That's okay. It just means, hey, rerun this because some data just changed, which was the descriptions. So I'm going to rerun this and now I'm going to get greens. So I'll go back to the sheet just for demonstration. And yes, there was an appointment set and it's at this place at this time. And the phone number is well formatted. There is so much you can do with AI agents. So I want to leave you with one final thing that is, let's say a call did happen. You received the end of call report, you put it in the Google sheet, and then what? You check the Google sheet every day, or you can say we use Slack, right? So I might want to send a message to a channel of ours, send a message, format this the right way. And then what I can say is, hey, a call just happened, first name, last name, phone number. And then I can fill in the details from the AI agent's output by just dragging and dropping. So every time I'm going to get a notification, hey, a call just happened. These are the details of the person. I can put in here whether the appointment was set and everything else I would want to know. And yes, there is a Slack tool that you can use for AI agents. So you can use do the exact same thing. The difference is that because I'm using this structured output parser, I'm getting this information nice and neat that I can reuse in future modules, not just in this step. So if your brain is tingling with ideas, good, go experiment. If your brain is tingling with confusion, good, go experiment. You have everything you need and remember that errors means progress. So take a deep breath, read the error, and if you really need some help, like I showed you last video, go to Claude, ask it. Hey, what's going on with this error? How can I fix this? Because the true power is not having an AI agent, but is collaborating with an agent. I am so excited for you and the next sessions in this series. So to recap, there are five components for an AI agent. Number one, the system prompt and the user message. Number two, which type of model you're using to create the answer. And the optional components, number three, memory, number four, tools. And number five, the structured output. And if I can leave you with one last tip is don't add too many tools to one AI agent. Keep it at three, maybe four tools. Because as powerful as today's models are, I want you to prioritize reliability over complexity. And you'll see how much further you can go because you won't be dealing with the headaches of a super complex workflow. Because in order to get here, you first have to master this. And if you want the shortcut, you can book a call with me below so I can work on your projects, offer you private consultations. And if you really, really want to learn how to master this, come join our school community. I'm happy to give you all the secrets and everything you need to know to level up. All you have to remember is to never stop prompting. I'll see you in the next one.